So the concept of a 251 is really quite simple, but there is the prerequisite of understanding, that's a hard word to say, prerequisite, of understanding a few things first and foremost. Number one, we have to understand what numbers even mean when we're talking about music and why we use them. We've talked about this a little bit before, but very quickly, let me just break it down. A C major scale sounds like this. Well, rather than looking at the note names, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, why don't we just call them numbers? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then this is also C, so we consider that really just one again repeated. This is important because what this allows us to do is it allows us to think of every single key in the same exact way. So even if I'm playing an F major scale, I can still think of it like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then back to one. So it just makes our lives way easier when we're talking about all kinds of different keys because if we're talking about uh, chord progressions or melodies, it's we can talk about them in numbers and it'll apply to every key universally. So that is step number one. We wanna think about the scale in numbers. Now we can think about chords in the same way. So for example, a C major chord is built using notes from the C major scale. In this case, it's one, three, and five. So that's just a real simple C major triad. That works in every single key. A flat, we use the one, we don't use the two. We use the three, we don't use the four. We use the five. There's an A flat major triad. So you can see how the numbers makes it really easy to think about everything universally with one simple code, rather than having to go, oh, an A flat major triad is A flat, and then it's C, and then it's E flat, but yet a D flat major triad is D flat, and then it's, what is it? Oh, oh F, and then it's oh, a, a flat. It's, it's a lot more to memorize and think about. And at some point, maybe that's helpful, but down the road, once we wanna be able to move fluidly between keys, it's much easier to just think about it like one, three, five. One, three, five. One, three, five. So that's talking about scales and how we build chords out of those scales. Now, what happens if we start to talk about chord progressions in a certain key. Well, we can still do the same thing. If I'm playing a song that's overall in the key of C major, meaning it's gonna move around to different chords, but the home bass is always gonna come back to C. Well, every chord around it, we can just call it by the number that it's built from. So for example, in the key of C, well, the C major chord would be the one chord. The F major chord would be the four chord, and move up one more, and the G major chord would be the five chord. So we're using the same concept of just these numbers that allow us to think universally in, in every key. And all we're doing is we're just applying them to chord progressions rather than individual notes. So if we're talking about C major still, let's play some chords and we'll just say what they are as we go. So one chord, minor two chord, four chord, five chord. It's, I, it's like I had to think about that for a second. So this number system helps us to understand everything. We're gonna apply it to building chords, we're gonna apply it to building chord progressions, and we're gonna apply it to using these chord progressions and these chords in any key you can possibly think of. And when you understand it, all of a sudden, if somebody says, oh yeah, two, five, one. Oh, well now we kind of have an idea of what we're even talking about. So just on a note basis, what's, what's a two, five, one? Well, let's talk about C major. So we're gonna go two, which is D, three, four, five, which is G, and then one. Okay, so we're going D, G, C. Simple enough. Well, what if we turn those into chords and we do, instead of uh, the second note, the fifth note, and the first note, what if we do the two chord, the five chord, and the one chord? That's kind of a familiar sound. It's one of the most common sounds in music ever. D minor. G major, C major, two, five, one. That's it, that's the whole thing. When everybody says two, five, one this, two, five, one that, that's at a very basic level, that's all they're talking about. It's just, it's just two, five, one. And you can see, you, or rather hear, you can hear how common of a sound that is. And the reason it gets used so much is because it's a very effective way to wrap up something. It feels like an ending.
It just sounds like it's it's final. It sounds like it's just, yeah, we're, we're coming to the end. Here we go. Yep, yep, yep. Boom, there's the end. So a two, five, one is an extremely compelling movement. And by that, I mean that each chord it leads very well into the next one. Now let's elaborate on that a little bit because we can make it so that the chords lead into each other even more. Check this out. All I did there was I just introduced a couple additional notes into each chord, but I utilized notes that would lead their way into the next chord very smoothly. And these have a very fitting name. They're called leading tones because they are tones or notes that lead into the next thing. And I'll show you exactly what those are. That motion there has a couple of leading tones. Now, let me sparse this chord out a bit so that we're only using a few notes. We're gonna, in the, in the bottom, we're just gonna play the roots. We're gonna play the two, the five, and then the one. In the right hand, we're gonna use two notes for each chord. And those notes are going to be the third, which in the case of the D chord is a minor third. And then we're gonna use the seventh, which in the case of the D chord is a minor seventh. So we have D, F, and C. So watch this. Let's go from the D chord to the G chord. Well, our bass, mo our bass note moved, but there is a movement up here where the seventh of the D chord led very well into the third of G. One, two, three. Right? Because that's a half step, it's such a small movement, it works very well. We call that a leading tone because it kind of like... Uh, and now we're left hanging on this cliff and it, the whole thing just really wants to resolve to the one chord. Now there was another note in there and take a look at what that one did. It's this F, okay? So when we're playing the D chord, that F happens to be the minor third. And remember, we're also using this minor, the minor seventh as well. When we move to the G chord, watch what happens. I didn't move that note. I kept it right where it was. But look what it is now. Now it is one, two, three, four, five, six, flat seven. It's the dominant or the flat seventh of G. So what was the minor third of D became the dominant seventh of G. So that's what we call a common tone in that the same note works in both chords even if it has a different function. Function meaning in one chord it was the third, in another chord it's the seventh. This is another helping hand in making this motion be so compelling. And now you can hear where that uh, wants to move. It wants to resolve itself. And once it resolves, that's a very pleasing sound to our ears because it makes sense. It's a motion that feels complete now. We go from here. This is a little bit of tension. That's a lot of tension. And then we resolve all of the tension by releasing the chord back to the one, back to the home bass. So you can see how those two notes, they really, one led in one case and the other one led in the, in the second change. And, and, it, and it just really drives this whole movement to resolve to the one and to resolve to the home bass, to a place where it feels like, yeah, we don't have to go anywhere. This isn't sitting on a cliff. It's not, there's not a lot of tension there. It feels very home. It feels very resolved, very relaxed. Done. Versus, there's a lot of tension in that chord. That chord really just feels like it needs to resolve. So this two, five, one motion is a very compelling resolution tool. It helps us move from this one chord, building tension here, and then we release that tension by resolving the chord back to the home base. Now this is just the start because we can take this 
concept and we can I mean here I'll just play some some different versions of like a 251 in this in the key of C major and you can see all the different ways all the different ways that we could uh, voice it and all the different uh, notes that we could bring in to add color to the to the voicings and to add you know some just some more embellishment so on a very simple level we'll start here right so that's very simple but now let's start to add some things to it and make it a little more complicated So this is setting the stage for what's ultimately going to be like one of the most useful tools we have, whether we use the two in front of the five to the one, or even sometimes we just use the five. Now here's a really cool thing that I utilized in the video where I accompanied all the celebrities singing Imagine. Because they were all over the place from key to key to key, all I had to do was put a five in front of each new key and it felt like it kind of shifted there naturally. It's easy if you try. We can move from any key to any key just by putting a five in front of it, as opposed to just going and then being like, now we're in this key, now we're in this key, now we're in this key, right? You can make that awkwardness sound, what did I just do? I think I just went to C to uh, E flat to A to G flat. Okay, so let's do C, E flat, A, G, G flat, but we're gonna put a five in front of each of them. still be a little strange but you can see how it works a lot better by putting the five in front we can go one step further now and add the two in front of each of them as well so that every single key change would be a two five one and you almost can see that like it doesn't even sound strange anymore whereas when I was jumping around just from one to one to one new key new key new key new key it doesn't really work it's a it's odd right but watch this if we put a two and a five in front of each one it almost makes them go smoothly into each other because we're jumping from one place to a strange place but we're using such compelling motion that's begging for a resolution to a certain place that it kind of hides the strangeness of moving from key to key. So this is a really handy device that composers will use a lot to navigate from key change to key change. So I don't wanna make this video too long, but there's so many different places that we can go in terms of explaining how this 251 thing works and how we can use it. But at a very basic level, this is the thing we need to understand about the 251. It is a tool that creates a compelling musical harmonic motion that ultimately results in a resolution at a home Bass. So two, five, one. It makes that C major chord feel complete. It makes it feel like it's resolved. We're home. We don't need to go anywhere else. There's no remaining tension. It's done. But anyways, that's just the basic sort of introduction to what a 251 is, why we use it all the time, why it's such a useful tool. If you have questions about this, please leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching today, and we will see you next time.